Okay. So the next module is on um, semiconductor junctions. Uh, most of this module will be spent on diodes. And like I said, since we only have about uh, 10 minutes left, we're just going to quickly go over some of the basic concepts of diodes and just revisit it um, in the next class. I just want to give you an idea uh, of the basic concept of why a diode forms a space charge region. And we're going to relate it back to the concepts in module four. Uh, so think of this as an example of the four carrier processes that uh, we just spent a lot of time talking about. So in this module, we're going to talk about um, uh, uh, what happens when you put a p-type and an n-type material together, and you, you get a device that's called a diode. Um, we've already learned about the properties of n-type and p-type semiconductors on their own. In this module, we put the two uh, semiconductors next to each other, and we see what happens. Um, so it forms a diode, and uh, we can talk about the energy band model for the diode, the physical model for the diode. Eventually, we'll get into the equations describing the diode operation, the IV characteristics. So the the exponential diode equation that you probably looked at, that you know from your circuits classes, um, we're basically going to derive that. We start from the solid state physics. Um, and we eventually get to the point of describing the equations. And then in your circuits classes, you, you just use those equations and you solve your, um, you, know, you solve your circuits or you design your circuits to use them. So the different levels of abstraction here. Uh, we're going to talk about dyes, but we'll also talk about metal semiconductor junctions at the end. Metal semiconductor junctions are very important in MOSFET uh, devices. Um, they have diode-like properties or they can have uh, ohmic contact-like properties. So like I said, today we're just going to talk about like a, a preview here. Um, uh, there's going to, we're going to talk about the physical model, um, the drift diffusion balance, and the space charge region. So this is what we're going to focus on uh, right now. And then we'll get into, um, I don't think we'll get have time to get into the energy band model and the device, uh, definitely not the device equations. I want you to understand what's physically happening um, in a PN junction. So. I'm going to start actually with the next slide. Um, so let's say we take an n-type material and uh, an n-type semiconductor and a p-type semiconductor, and we put them next to each other. And I want you to think about um, the four carrier processes. Um, so let's actually let's just look look at this. Uh, what what are the carrier four carrier processes that happens here? Generation, diffusion, drift. Okay, generation, diffusion, drift, and recombination. Um, so let's focus on the interface. Let's focus on the middle of the two materials. Uh, what ha a p-type material has the, the way that a p-type material is defined is that there's a lot of holes, very few electrons. And in n-type material, we have a lot of electrons and very few holes. There's a lot of diffusion. There's diffusion, exactly. Diffusion, it's actually what drives a lot of the unique properties of, of the diode. Um, so in this example, remember, we, have not, um, we haven't add, add, added any light to the material. Okay, so th there's no like optical generation. There's just like the thermal generation and thermal recombination, which is pretty small. So most of the interesting things are driven by diffusion, and, and um, as we'll see, there's also a drift component to it. Okay, uh, So let, let's just talk about physically what's going on here. Um, so I spent some time making this diagram because I think it'll really help you guys understand it. Um, so n-type material, what do we know about n-type materials? Is that they have they have excess electrons? Okay, so you have your excess electron here, and remember that you also um, have a positively charged nucleus. Why is that nucleus positively charged? Let's remind ourselves. Lost their right, exactly. So if it loses this electron, then then it 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 will have an effective positive charge. Right. Um, so similarly, on this side of the junction. We have a p-type material. All right, just imagine that we have, um, let's, let's say this is boron, 
column three element. And boron, uh, because it has uh, uh, one less electron, it's a column three element, it generates a hole, and which is an incomplete bond. Okay, and the hole that I've just drawn a circle around it with the H plus around there. And um, the ion itself, the nucleus, has an effective negative one charge, opposite, just opposite of the n-type. Okay, so now we think about this. I've only drawn one atom here, right? But you obviously know that there's a whole bunch of atoms like that around there. Now, um, so what's going to happen is, as David said, d diffusion is going to happen because the n-type material has a lot of these electrons. So there's a high electron concentration on the n side, and low electron concentration on the right side. So the first thing that happens is that the, the, the electrons are going to diffuse, the holes are going to diffuse. So um, the way you can look at this is the electrons are going to be diffusing over to uh, the right side like this. So imagine the electron moving over like this and it leaves behind, leaves this behind. Okay, so it leaves behind an effective uh, positive charge. And we call that an immobile charge. That's a key point. We call it immobile. The electron's mobile, right? The electron is loosely bound to the lattice. So the electron, if you apply some kind of field to it, or it's if you apply field to it, it'll dif it'll drift. If you apply a concentration gradient to it, then it'll diffuse. It's loosely bound, so it can move. But but the ion cannot move. The nucleus cannot move. It's bound to other atoms, and that it turns out that's a very key key point that develops the space charge region. Um, okay, so imagine that the hole is doing the same thing. You know, the hole is diffusing over to the right side. So, um, yeah, just imagine the hole moving over like this, and um, because uh, of this diffusion effect, you're leaving behind these immobile charges. you're depleting the carriers in this region because of diffusion. The electrons saw lower concentration on the left side, so they diffused over here. Holes diffused uh, onto the other side, but they left behind those uh, charged ions. They call this zone, there's two names for it. One name is a depletion region, and they call it depletion region is because that region is depleted of mobile carriers. It's depleted of electrons and holes. They also call it the space charge region because there are immobile charges in the middle, right? Why they cannot recombine in the middle of the way? They can met. That's a great question. It's a great question. What the question was? Why don't the holes recombine when they diffuse away? And the answer is they do. So you're you're right on. <laughs> In fact, like this hole, like when this hole diffused over um, to the right side, guess what happens? Let's 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 back up for a second. Um, electron diffuses over to the right side. Okay, it's in a p-type material. What does a p-type material mean? There's lots of holes, right? An electron sees tons of holes. It's like um, it's like a bachelor walking into an all-girls school. <laughs> right? It sees it sees um there's a high chance that 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 the bachelor will find a date, you know? <laughs> there's a high chance that the, that there a recombination event will happen. More so, more so than if it, if if the electron was at the all boys school on the end side. You see that's why I I put this in blue and put this in in red, right? <laughs> Okay, so so an electron on the left side has less probability of um, recombining because there's a lot of electrons, very few holes. But once it diffuses over to the right side, yes, it will recombine, and it'll recombine very quickly. All right. So the same thing with the holes. Um, the holes will go to the other side and recombine very quickly, and so that's what forms this depletion region, also called the space charge region. Now, um, I, I didn't. Um, yeah, so you can just put an X across this electron because it recombines and the hole also recombines. In the depletion region? Um, they, these regions, uh, you know, when they diffuse across here and then they uh, uh, recombine out here, it takes a little bit of time for it to recombine, right? 
it doesn't recombine right at the edge. It has it diffuses over like a diffusion length or so before it recombines. So one roughly like one or a few diffusion lengths over, you get into this region where it's it's it, we call it a neutral region. In the neutral region, there's no space charges. All the space charges are in the depletion region. That's the region that's depleted of electrons and holes. Okay, so you end up getting a neutral region on the P side and, and um, a neutral region on, on the N side. Okay, so uh, now here's the other part. Um, the depletion region, because of these space charges, it develops what? Develop, develops drift, exactly. When you have a positive charge buildup on one side and a negative charge buildup on the other side, guess what that is? That's like your classic parallel plate capacitor. You know, like the, the thing that we've done many times in this class where you say, if you put a voltage, if you put a voltage across a plate like this and you have a buildup of positive charges on one side and you have negative charges on the other side, you get electric field, right? Now, in this case, we're not putting a voltage source on there. We just have a buildup of positive and negative charge. But that buildup of positive and negative charge generates an electric field. And that's what generates a, a it actually generates a small potential across the junction. That 0.7 volts that you talk about with diodes, yeah. you, know, you heard about that 0.7, that's, this is exactly where that comes from. Um, so the, the way that we can look at it, you have positive charges here, negative charges here. So which way is the electric field pointed? Sorry. Right to left. Yeah, that's right. So the electric field is pointing in this region. Okay. Um, as it turns out, when you have an electric field, initially we said there's no, there's no drift because there's no electric field, right? Mm -hmm. But when the space charge region forms, and it forms very quickly, almost instantaneously, now you have an electric field. At equilibrium, remember, all processes are balanced, right? We talked about that in the last module. So it turns out that you get these diffusion currents from the, from the electrons and, diff and holes diffusing across the junction. But then you develop an electric field. And because of that electric field, you end up getting drift current going in the opposite direction. So if you have... Um, if your electric field is pointing from right to left, which way are the holes going to drift? Exactly. So you see what the hole did. The, the hole diffused over to the right, and it recombined. But then there's also holes here that are uh, other holes here that are drifting over to the left. So the the diffusion of holes is balanced by the drift of holes. Similarly, on this side, the diffusion of electrons is balanced by the drift of electrons. And at equilibrium, the processes balance and they add up to zero. Okay, that's a good good stopping point for today. We'll we'll get into that more on um, on Monday's class. A any questions? Okay, good. So when is the first uh, exam?